this lesson, we are going to discuss about the last topic in, in the planar kinetics of rigid body force and acceleration. And in this topic, we will discuss the general plane motion. So from our previous lesson, we have uh, known that this is the general equation of motion for a planar motion. Uh, we will calculate the sum of forces in x and y axis. So we have sum of fx, sum of force in x axis that is equal to magx, sum of forces in y axis, this is equal to magy. And in this case, if we calculate the moment about the center of gravity g, the equation for moment becomes sum of mg that is equal to sum of all the moment of forces about g and sum of all couple moments. This will be in the end equal to ig times alpha where ig is the mass moment of inertia of the rigid body and alpha is the angular acceleration of the rigid body. In the case, if we calculate the moment about other points other than the center of gravity, let's say we take point P here and calculate the moment about point P. Now the moment equation becomes sum of moment about point P. This will be equal to the moment of forces about point P plus the sum of moments. And this will be equal to sum of kinetic moment about point P. We have discussed this in the class already. So sum of kinetic moments about point P is basically calculating the moment by referring to the kinetic diagram. So in this case, in the kinetic diagram, we have three arrows. Uh, so we have the MAGX and MAGY. So we have to calculate the moment of MAGX with respect to point P, so MAGX has a distance of dy and if we take counterclockwise as positive in this case, so MAGX going to point P will be counterclockwise. So MAGX going to point P will be counterclockwise in this direction. So that's why this is positive. And MAGY with a distance of dx going to point P will be in clockwise direction. So this will be negative. And we have Ig alpha in counterclockwise. So this will also be positive. Therefore, for mo kinetic moment about point P, we have magx dy positive, magy dx negative plus Ig alpha. This is the case if we calculate the moment about point P. Now let's, took, let's take a look at uh, a case of a wheel translating uh, on a ground. In this case, it has an angular acceleration alpha and there is a force applied at the center of gravity to the left. And in the case of a wheel rotating like this, uh, we have already learned in planar kinematics that this contact point down here, the contact point between the wheel and the, and the surface and the ground is the location of IC. So basically, in this, at this location, the velocity V is equal to zero. That is why this is the location of IC, the instantaneous center of zero velocity. So in this case, in this case, um, we are going to calculate uh, the sum of forces in normal and tangential axis, which uh, we have learned in previous topic, rotation. So Fn, sum of Fn is equal to m omega square r, and sum of Ft in tangential axis is equal to m alpha r, and sum of moment about Ic is indeed equal to I I C alpha and this is pretty much similar to sum of moment about point O uh, in rotation. Remember because uh, in, a, in a general plane motion, the location of I C is 
is uh, as if the the rigid body is making a pure rotation about this point at this particular moment so um in a wheel problem there is another uh, an, there is a problem called frictional rolling problem this involves wheels disc cylinder or balls that often require another equation to solve the problem so this is called the frictional rolling problem this extra equation represents the frictional force there are two cases the first one is that if we assume that there is no slipping occur between the rigid body in this case the wheel or disc with the ground so if no slipping occurs then the equation that we need to use is ag equals to alpha r if there is slipping occur then the, the 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 this equation is no longer valid ag equals to alpha r is not valid if slipping occur then we need to use f uh, f in this case is the frictional force f is equal to mu k which is the coefficient of kinetic friction times the normal force now let's take a look at an example so this is a wheel a 25 kg wheel that has a radius of gyration kg equals to 0.2 meter so whenever a radius of gyration is given we know that this wheel here is a, a non-uniform shaped uh, rigid body so that is why we cannot use the 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 equation to calculate the mass moment of inertia but we have to to calculate the mass moment of inertia by using the given radius of gyration so if a new if a 50 newton meter couple moment is applied to the wheel so there is a couple moment m equals to 50 newton meter applied to the wheel we want to determine the acceleration of its mass center g we want to determine what is a g the coefficient of static and kinetic friction between the wheel and the plane at a are mu s equals to 0.3 and mu k equals to 0.25 respectively so so notice that here two coefficients of frictions are given one is static one is kinetic which means that we don't know for sure whether the wheel is experiencing slipping during the motion or uh, it does not slip so we have to find out so first when we have a kinetic problem of course we need to draw the free body diagram and also the kinetic diagram so this is the free body diagram of the wheel we have a weight pointing down at the center of gravity we have a, a, a normal force at contact point a and a and since the wheel is rotating in clockwise direction therefore the friction force will be will be op opposing the clockwise rotation so it will be pointing to the right in the same direction as the motion of the wheel so this will be fr pointing to the right and then we have another couple moment here so this completes the free body diagram of the wheel now the kinetic diagram we know that the wheel is not going to move up and down so there is no motion in y-axis we just have magx um, the the point g is traveling to the right and also the wheel is experiencing rotation so we have ig alpha as well so there are only two arrows uh, on the kinetic diagram next uh, what we need to do is since we have ig involved here we need to calculate the mass moment of inertia so in this case because we know that this is a non-uniform uh, non-homogeneous uh, rigid body so we have to calculate ig by using the equation mass multiply with the radius of gyration squared so mk square we have 25 kg mass multiply with 0.2 square we have 1 kg meter square for the mass moment of inertia next we can just um, calculate the sum of mo uh, sum of forces in x axis that is equal to magx so we take a look at the free body diagram there is only one force in x axis that is uh, fr so we have fr equals to in the kinetic diagram there is only uh, one arrow in x axis so this will be equal to m agx or we can 
rewrite this as fr equals to 25 agx so we don't know what is the value of fr we don't know what is the value of agx so this will be our first equation now we calculate the sum of forces in y axis so we have the normal force pointing up positive the weight is pointing down negative and if we take a look at the kinetic diagram there is no motion in y-axis therefore this will be equal to zero so in the end we have an a that is equal to 245.25 newton still we cannot solve the problem here so we need the third equation that is the moment so now we calculate the moment about the center of gravity so uh, mg is equal to ig alpha so we take a look at the free body diagram the weight and the normal force does not have any moment about point G. So we have the, the couple moment M, couple moment M here, that is equal to 50 Newton meter. And we have the friction force. Friction force is obviously is going to point uh, in the counterclockwise direction. So it will be negative. So negative or minus FR times the distance uh, from FR to point G is exactly the radius of the wheel. So we multiply FR with 0 0.36. And this is equal to IG times alpha. IG we have calculated up here that is equal to 1. So we write 1 down here and alpha is unknown. So we have our second equation. Alpha plus 0 0.36 FR is equal to 50. 50 comes from the moment here. So we still cannot solve uh, these two equations because we have only two equations, but we have three unknowns. We have FR unknown. We have FR as one unknown. We have AGX, another unknown. And we have alpha, three unknowns that we have. So we need the fourth equation. We need the fourth equation. So therefore, we use the frictional, uh, what we have learned in frictional rolling problem. Now we, first we start by assuming that there is no slipping occur in this case. So for no slipping case, we have the equation AG is equal to alpha R. This is for the case of no slipping occur. So in this case, we know that R is 0 0.36. Therefore, AG is equal to 0 0.36 alpha then we can substitute this into equation 1. So we have FR minus 25 is the mass. AG now we replace with 0 0.36 alpha uh, that we have, that we obtain up here. So finally, we get FR, equal, FR minus 9 alpha equals to 0. This will become our third equation. Then we can solve the third and the second equation simultaneously. Here we have FR and alpha unknowns. Second equation, we have FR and alpha as well. So we, when we solve uh, equation three and equation two simultaneously, we get FR equals to 106.13 Newton. We get alpha equals to 11.79 rad per second square. But this is the case where we assume that no slipping occur, but we don't know for sure whether it is slipping or not. So we have to check. For no slipping to occur, FR must be less than equal to mu as the static kinetic friction multiply with NA. So we have our NA values here, 245.25. So when we multiply mu S with NA, mu s is given as 0 0.3 up here so we multiply 0 0.3 times 245.25 we get 73.58 from our calculation up here we have fr equals to 106.13 which is larger than than 73.58 therefore we know that uh, our initial assumption that no slipping occur is wrong so basically or actually slipping does occur and when slipping occur our equation that we use here ag equals to alpha r is no longer valid so ag is ag equals to alpha r is not valid because in in this particular case slipping does occur and therefore 
we need to use uh, another equation since slipping occur we know from our uh, from our previous slide that we need to use the equation fr equals to mu k times n a now we have to use the the coefficient of kinetic friction because slipping occur so coefficient of static friction cannot be used we have to use the coefficient of kinetic friction so now fr equals to mu k times n a mu k is given as 0 0.25 times 2 245.25 therefore we have fr equals to 61.31 then we can use this value to substitute in equation 1 so we have fr here can be substituted substituted with 61.31 therefore we have agx is equal to 2.453 meter per second so this will be the 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 correct or the actual acceleration of the center of gravity of the wheel and we can also substitute in equation number two to get the uh, angular acceleration of the wheel that is equal to alpha uh, equals to 27.93 rad per second square. So this is how we solve the frictional rolling problems by always assuming that no slipping occur first and we use the equation A, uh, AG equals to alpha R and we have to check whether our assumption is correct or not and if our assumption is wrong then we need to do we need to redo the calculation by using the equation for slipping occur that is fr equals to mu k times na